I journal with a fountain pen because I must. I've tried to walk away from it, I've tried to take a break, I've tried to quit outright to make room for the other things that are in my life, but I just couldn't because I grew smaller. Without journaling, my world constricts. I stop recognizing the connections between my life and its narrative thread. Journaling keeps me in touch with myself better than any other activity in my life, and it helps me to hold on to who I am and to describe it in that moment accurately and absolutely. Quiet times in the wilderness are enriching and reflective, but the experience is ephemeral. Once I leave, all that peace I've attained just drifts away. Journaling quiets my negative monologue, or at least it helps me to keep tabs on it. It also helps me to contextualize the victories, the stresses, the challenges, and the many inspirations of my life, and they remain there for me to revisit any time I wish. An aid memoir, a time machine, holding all my experiences in words, formed by iridium tipping, narrow or wide or stylized. I choose to journal with a fountain pen because the beauty or drama of a line is expressed in the nature of my handwriting at that time. It is a glimpse into my emotional intensity. My handwriting whispers or shouts, is restrained or utterly mad. A fountain pen is the brush through which I paint my words upon the page and I do so in varying degrees of intensity. And there is something so satisfying about it. The pleasure is visceral, primal. You plunge into the stream of writers going back generations, millenniums, all the way back to the dawn of humanity, tracing lines in the sand, tracing the outlines of their hands on the walls of caves. I could journal on my iPad, be easy enough, but text is dispassionate. Font is dispassionate. There's just no comfort for me there. With text, there is no expression of humanity beyond the literal meaning of the words. Their shapes are flat. They glow from behind, devoid of meaning, ghostly, simply present. The only means of variation is in your choice of font and their size. I don't want to write into the void. I want to reorder my void to give it meaning. Script lives. It glistens upon the page, lives in a single instance, is precious and personal and will never look the same way exactly twice. Whether it is in a journal or a correspondence, handwriting emotes. It can speak or scream its intentions through the shape of a line, the amount of ink that was put down, the colors chosen, the nib that shapes them, all these different variables form a subtext of meaning that shines through. Handwriting leaves behind an additional layer of meaning, a language of its own, above that which is written. How disciplined is the hand at the time that wrote it? How restrained, tentative, how passionate, angry, and how does this correlate to what was actually written? There are hints on the page, and this is part of the enduring mystery 
taking in all of this information, much of it done subconsciously, but it does register. And this is the fascinating part of handwriting to me. Are the words carefully formed in disciplined lines and slants upon the page in a pleasing uniform script? Or does it appear random and disconnected? Handwriting is expressive. Thicker, bolder lines often correspond to more intense emotions, emotional desperations, longing expressed with a thick downstroke of a pen, an emphasis, a longing to be seen, recognized, a way to reach out and say, I am feeling this deeply. Does anyone notice? Does anyone feel the same as I do? Can you see me? While wispy lines on the page whisper, hint, suggest, or beguile in their curlicule baroque swirls or restrained finery, a lattice work of echoing voices, a quiet symphony of line to form, encircling spaces on the page, dotted periods like notes of trebly piano keys, a thicker line here or there for emphasis. And many times these are mixed for a dynamic tempest of rising thoughts from quieter introductions to more impassioned statements, like the sweeping rise of an orchestra, like an aria, a passionate soloist in a bright inky line across the paper. Let it sing. Through all of this, there's a voice striving to be heard. Listen, listen for that voice. There's a person behind those words. It's tougher to see with font, but it's readily apparent when you see that vivid handwriting. And these people are more complex than any library full of beautiful memories and thoughts as rich as any art museum. It is another layer of expression leading to an additional level of meaning once the ink dries. It's another tool you can use in your writer's box and once you master it, it's another way for you to get the immediate emotion into your writing. Variation, intensity, speed, all regulated by the hand that drives the pen, the mind that drives the arm, the inspiration that guides the mind. Through this, our humanity connects with others and on so many levels. Now, of course, there's a place for text. Computers are wonderful tools, but there's no reason one cannot delight in the act of handwriting. Photography did not eliminate all painters and neither should our devices dismiss the fountain pen. I hope this little niche of ours, this corner of the internet we all share in some way helps to inspire a new legion of writers armed with a journal and a fountain pen heading out into the world, into the sunshine, into the wilderness, into art galleries and cafes, sitting down, finding some moments of peace to bring some order into their thoughts into their memories and to make themselves that much more happy and healthy. This is what I'm trying to inspire. So what do you think? Do you see the difference between font and handwriting? I bet you do. Let me know in the comments. 
Also, thank you so much for watching. And if you've reached this point in this video, consider subscribing. As you can see, we go to some amazing places together. And if you want to support the channel even more, membership is available. I'd love to see you behind the scenes. So I make new videos every week and I have a live show every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. So I can promise you, we will see each other again very soon, further up the road. So take care.